Sometimes fabric deals show up in the most unexpected places. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you want to take your sewing to the next level, this is the place to be. So I just wanted to take some time today to share this fabric haul with you. First of all, it's from Walmart. And before you roll your eyes, let me just tell you that when you go to Walmart, they have the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay, so you really have to look through, and I've got some tips for you on that at the end of this video. But when I do buy Walmart fabric, I normally wouldn't go there for a fancy dress I was planning for or, you know, a, just a special outfit of any kind. Normally, I find that it's really difficult to find knit fabric for muslins um, in some places. So I go to Walmart for that. Um, but sometimes I end up with some really beautiful fabric. So that's what I want to show you today and explain a few tips on what's good, what's not good, what to look out for, and that kind of thing. So in a moment, I'm going to get on with showing you this fabric. But first of all, let me just say thank you and hello to all my new subscribers. Thank you so much. Doing a YouTube channel can be expensive and time consuming. Um, so seeing that you have new subscribers and seeing people comment and like and share, those things are the things that keep uh, YouTube content creators going, including me. So thank you so much, all of you, for everything. I've had several people buy me coffees and different things, and I tell you, it is so much appreciated. And I don't take time enough to say that. Um, but if you're new here, you're just watching, I'm thankful for you too. So thank you so much. All right, let me get to this fabric and let me tell you what my plans are besides muslins because I really did go there thinking that I do a lot of pattern testing and, you know, do a lot of maybe I want to do a muslin of something to make sure it's going to fit before I cut into that really expensive fabric. And knits are really, you know, it's difficult to find a knit that you can use for that because it's, they're a little more expensive or you order it online and you don't want to something you've paid $8.99 for shipping for on top of the cost of the fabric it's not really want to use it for a muslin maybe so um, I actually got some pretty good deals this time I in total bought 24 yards of fabric and I paid $38 which equals about a dollar 68 I think something like that First, I got this gray on gray striped jersey. I love this. This is uh, this was four yards for four dollars, so pretty good. Um, at a dollar a yard, I didn't expect it to be very thick. That's the big thing with knits. Sometimes they're super thin, but uh, honestly, this one's pretty good. It'll sh it'll uh, hold up for a t-shirt or even maybe a t-shirt dress. Um, wonderful. I absolutely love this fabric. Um, some things I might do with this classic tee. This is gray on gray, so this lends itself to have some uh, Ohio State logo put on maybe a classic tee for me. Um, maybe just a laundry day tee. Um, could be a dock side for one of the guys. Um, anyway, this is definitely like a staple that you could almost use anytime. Great pattern. You could do a, a Sloan out of this too. That would be really neat. I'm going to save these two for last. This one is a jersey. Um, it is a little bit thin, but I think it's nice for like maybe a cardigan or jammies. Um, this was also, this was three yards for $8. So it was a little bit higher on the spectrum there in cost, but still very, very uh, inexpensive. And I love it. It's got like a pink and white little stripe with like a ribbing going through it. Um, I think this would make amazing pajamas. It would make a great baby onesie or a romper. Um, there's a lot of things you could do with this. And yeah, it could even be trim. Uh, you could use this as a bias trim on some other knit garment. Um, something white perhaps or even uh, off white. Love it. Uh, like I said, it is a little bit thinner doesn't pass the see-through test for me very well. I don't know if you can see that, but you can kind of see the outline through it. So it'd have to be something that's not real fitted, um, but you could definitely 
Uh, there are a lot of things you could make with this. I'm thinking maybe some Namaste pajamas, maybe even making a new Breckenridge Henley into a nightgown. That's something that would be really cool. All right, uh, the next one, this is another stripe. This was three for $8 as well. So there's three yards of this. This is the softest. It's so, so soft. I wish that you could feel through the camera, but um, obviously you can't do that. But this has all been pre-washed too. So this is after washing and it's super soft and nice. And actually the thickness level of this is pretty good. Uh, definitely can do t-shirts with this. This could also be a Henley. Um, the Breckenridge wouldn't be great in this. I have to find some this is all tan or almost a pink. It could be go either way, pink or tan, the stripe on off-white. Um, love this. I think the Breckenridge Henley would be re really great in this. I thought of taking the Breckenridge Henley and putting it on uh, another pattern, such as um, the Rockford, um, or you could put it on the Laundry Day Tee, uh, La Bella Donna, lots of things you could do there, and um, it would be great. This one I think might be my favorite of all the ones I got. This is a, it feels kind of like a rayon, uh, a rayon spandex. Um, I'm pretty sure it's all polyester. Maybe it's a single brushed um, poly, but it has a lot of stretch, a lot of recovery. It's very soft, very, very soft. And I love this print. This is definitely going to be some kind of top. I'm thinking maybe it might even be um, a Serenity uh, sweater top. That would be really pretty. Put a white tee or a, a uh, like a deep red tee underneath and it would be really sharp. This is at, okay, here's the thing. I thought this was sweatshirt fleece and I was just so excited. The thing is, it's the other side of velour. It was wrapped though, so this was out. So I may just make a, a sweatshirt with the wrong side out because I really like this sweatshirt knit. It's very thick, very nice. This has been washed and it didn't shrink hardly at all. Um, there was a fair amount of fuzz lint in the dryer, which I expect when you wash a sweatshirt fleece for the first time. But, well, how about that? This was um, two yards for $4. So for $2 a yard, it's beautiful. I mean, this is really beautiful fabric. This is the good, right? This is the good. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a couple that are, I thought were good. So this is what I'm gonna talk to you about here. This was wrapped up super tight and I thought it was pant weight polyester. However, when I unraveled it to see, this was four yards for $4. Um, it is more of a lining weight or, you know, something super drapey, but not, you couldn't do a t-shirt because it's too thin. You couldn't do leggings because it's way too thin. I think this though could be used, you know, on top, like to make a draping effect on something. It would be great as a lining in a knit garment. Sometimes you just want a little bit more of uh, something underneath. You could layer lace over this. Um, there's a lot of things you could do. So I actually have some navy blue lace or royal blue lace. And I think that might look really pretty over this. And this is navy in the same. Four, four yards for $4. Um, pretty much. I mean, what you could do with this, though, you could use this. What about lining a Tessa in, uh, and then using lace over top of this? It would really be beautiful. So a lot of things you could do. These are a little bit disappointing because I thought they would be pant weight, but they really aren't. But I still love it. I still know I'll use it. So, and it's great for muslins for sure. I mean, any knit muslin could be done in that. And for the first fit test, who cares, right? <laughs> if you don't, and then at a dollar a yard, if you end up throwing it away, so what, <laughs> right? So. Anyway, that is what I wanted to show you. And what I wanted to tell you is just a couple tips about buying things from either Walmart or a, um, if you go to an outlet where they don't really tell you a lot about what the fabric is, okay? My thing is that if it's cheap enough, 
and it looks pretty good. I'll bring it home, I'll wash it, and if it washes well and sews well, I use it. <laughs> I mean, you know, like there, there's, it's all that matters really. I mean, does it really matter that you don't know exactly what's in it as long as it, you know how to wash it and you can sew it? Doesn't matter. So, so when you're shopping at Walmart where things are rolled up already and cut, pre-cut, and you can't really see what's under there, what I would recommend doing, which I didn't do um, with these two, is putting your hand in there and grabbing, like you have to find the end and grab it and pull it out so you can kind of see how thick that is. And, you know, that way you know whether it's the weight that you're looking for or whether it'll work for whatever you would want it for. Definitely do that. I've not seen anybody open them up. I've been tempted though, but I don't think you really should open them up. But you can stick your finger down into the middle of it and pull out a single layer so that you know, you know, how thick it is. Uh, really, as I look at this, you know what you could do with this? Um, I could make leggings to wear under dresses, that would be fine with it. So uh, that's thought too. Some of the labels at Walmart will have information on them like 100% polyester or sometimes they'll say uh, cotton polyester blend or whatever. So if there is any information on the label, be sure and check that out. And the other thing that I would suggest is when you pre-wash these, you know, put them by themselves, um, hopefully get all the dye out because you know, cheaper fabrics could probably bleed onto other things um, more easily. So definitely, you know, mind what you put it in with. And if you're really, really concerned about it, like if it's a red or I might even with this navy, I washed it once, but I may wash it again before I use it just to make sure that all the dye is set in there and not going to spill onto something else on the garment. And then, you know, you just have to weigh what you do and don't know about the fabric and, you know, make your decisions. If you don't do muslins and don't do pattern tests, it may or may not be worth your time. But on the other hand, it is good for practice things. If you're a beginner, this is great, uh, especially if you want to learn how to sew knits and you just want to practice. This is great. Um, you could definitely do doll clothes, lots of doll clothes with these fabrics. Um, there are lots of things you could do. So I just want to encourage you to not overlook the fact that there are sometimes deals in unexpected places. I know a lot of people go thrifting for fabric. That's awesome as well. You can use sheets. Um, sometimes bed sheets have gorgeous prints on them and that's always uh, a nice thing as well. So um, these soft ones here, I feel like they need to be jammies. So that might end up being what that ends up being. But regardless, they're usable. So out of my 24 yards of fabric, okay, um, there are... Out of my 24 yards of fabric, there are 16 yards that could be used in a main garment that I would wear every day. So that's not bad. Eight yards that, you know, may or may not work in a garment, but definitely for a fit test or for a muslin or for a lining. So, and it's always good to have some of that stuff around just to play with, just to, you know, maybe you want to drape something on your mannequin and see how it goes. Uh, try your hand at some designing. That's always nice to have inexpensive things to play with. So anyway, I just want to encourage you to don't let your creativity stop at the dollar sign because, um, you know, there's a lot. Sewing can be a really expensive hobby if you don't learn how to be frugal. So along with learning how to fit and how to be really, really happy with your garments, um, another thing about being a sewist is that it can save you money if you make your clothes and, you know, if you make things you would buy anyway, and if you um, sometimes, you know, look in unexpected places for bargains, uh, garage sales, um, thrift stores, just don't, don't eliminate any of those. Just keep your mind open and um, 
It's always nice. A lot of people when I was in photography didn't realize how much I sewed um, because I, you know, was so busy. I didn't really talk about it a lot. You know, I made a lot of my own clothes and things for my grandkids, but a lot of the people I worked around didn't really realize that I sewed. So when I did tell them um, after I left photography and I started this channel and they're like, I didn't know you sewed, you know, and I, yeah, I do. And, and so as we were talking, they said to me, wow, you've had the two most expensive hobbies. And I said, well, photography wasn't really a hobby, right? <laughs> so that, you know, that, that wasn't really expensive. I mean, it paid every, every penny that I spent on photography equipment I earned back. But when it came to sewing, I said, well, you know, sewing does not have to be expensive. You just have to be frugal. And this is one way that you can be frugal, sew a lot, have the same frame of mind that you do for clothes. You wouldn't go to Walmart to buy your prom dress or your wedding gown or a suit to wear to work or whatever, but you would go to Walmart maybe to pick up a t-shirt, a cami, um, a pair of pajamas, right? So if you would buy those kind of everyday things at Walmart, you know, you could buy the fabric to sew there as well. So I guess it's just something about having a little bit of an open mind and not restricting yourself to just the online fabric stores, which can be really expensive. So um, for us here in my town to walk in and buy something, we have Joann's and Hobby Lobby. And then the only other place that carries fabric at all is Walmart. So that's all we have to pick from here. If I'm making something that I really, really want to be nice, that's for a special occasion or for a trip or anything like that, um, then I probably am not going to go to Walmart to look for the fabric for it. I'm probably going to order it online. But so knock around t-shirts, those kind of things, that's what I'll use this stuff for. So I hope you have a great day. Uh, stay tuned for this weekend, uh, probably Friday, I'm going to do a video on clothes that you would wear to work at home. How to stay comfy and look good on Zoom. <laughs> anyway, have a great day. Happy sewing.